Let's begin with the historic weather. Even before hitting land, Hurricane Florence, a Category 2 storm, is making its presence felt with wind gusts up to 110 miles an hour and widespread flooding already. Officials warn that Florence could bring substantial storm surges of up to 11 feet. And more than 10 million people live, live right now in the storm's path. Tens of thousands have already lost their power. Well, North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper made this plea to area residents. To anyone still unwilling to take this storm seriously, let me be clear. You need to get yourself to a safe place now and stay there. We've got reporters all over the coast. Let's start with Gotti Schwartz, who's in Buford, or Beaufort, North Carolina. Gotti. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's, that's right. This has been the situation for the last uh, five or six hours. This isn't even the worst of it, Chris. We're expecting the worst of it to come tonight. But these winds that we're seeing, they're about 50, 60, maybe 70 miles an hour. Tonight, we're going to see winds over 100 miles an hour. We're also going to see high tide, and we're going to see a storm surge. So those three things going to be potentially catastrophic uh, around 11 o'clock. Beaufort is just across the way. We know that there are reports of homes already being flooded uh, by some storm surge. And you were talking a little bit ago about this being a Category 2 hurricane. A lot of people uh, have dismissed this as a Category 2 hurricane, maybe choosing not to evacuate. This is the strength of tropical storm force winds, not that hurricane, that 100 miles an hour plus hurricane winds. Those are coming. They are very close to us, and they're, they're going to rake their way through North and South Carolina. So uh, right after this, we can see on the radar they're approaching our location, so we're going to fall back. Uh, so we'll send it back to you, Chris. Well, thank you very much, Scotty Schwartz. Hang on there, sir. Let's bring in NBC's Kerry Sanders from North Carolina's Carolina Beach. Kerry, I've seen you everywhere with this. This is something. Look, looks a little calmer where you are, right? It, well, that's because I moved to a protected area. Quite frankly, I've been getting beaten up out there. I'm going to step away just for a second. I'm, I'm soaked all the way through, even with this clothes. But I want to take you out to the Atlantic here, and you can see sort of the force of the Atlantic. And we've been talking about this, but maybe we can explain a little bit about the concern about what is going to be the storm surge, an 11-foot dome or wall of water that will come over the sand dunes, over the boardwalk there and then we'll come in and with the force of the Atlantic behind it, it potentially will damage, take portions of homes and buildings. We're in what is allegedly a uh, constructed uh, building here that is designed to handle up to a category three hurricane. So we feel safe where we are. The reason you don't see the wind blowing me right now is because while that is the Atlantic, the wind is actually coming from this direction, so I'm slightly protected. But as that water comes in, it's coming in with the hurricane. In fact, the eye is apparently right now forecast to come here in uh, Carolina Beach, Wrightsville Beach, right about here. So we're going to see the strongest winds, and potentially we might even see the eye wall come over. Of course, that will come in between 4 and 10 a.m. because of the slow speed of all of this. But it's that continental shelf out there that starts about 60 miles and it's 120 feet and it just slopes right up so as the wind pushes the water on the top it builds it up and that is exactly what is ultimately the storm surge that folks are going to be dealing with but not too many folks here because thankfully most of them evacuated can a human being stand up and survive and not drown in a surge or do you have to be out of the way uh, to survive no. No, I, I, I'm going to tell you that I was in the beginning of a storm surge during Hurricane Matthew, and there is no way you can stand in a storm surge. I had to dash, fortunately got behind a building. But I want to tell you that when the storm surge is coming in, it's probably going to rip up portions of the uh, boardwalk there because of the force of the Atlantic Ocean. Those boards are flying around. There's other debris in the water. It hits you. There's absolutely no way. There, an Olympic swimmer couldn't handle this. I mean, this is impossible to stand in. Uh, it takes out portions of buildings, and depending on the construction and maybe the age of the construction, we have seen, uh, like Hurricane, uh, uh, I think it was Ike, that that literally leveled an entire portion of uh, Gilchrist Beach. There was one house left. So it's, it's nothing that anybody could withstand. And that's important because so often people say, 
I want to stay, I want to protect my property. There's nothing you can do. You can't protect and you a can, single thing. Most people, I guess, if you're trained to do it, can breathe up to three minutes or so. But how many, you couldn't, even if you could stand up during these surges, how long does the water stay at that level? Well, let me tell you that I recently did swift water rescue because uh, I was doing a story with the teams in upstate New York. The idea of standing is actually dangerous, too, because you've got the water moving. So it's your natural inclination to try and stand up. But what happens is your feet down there get caught on something, and then you get stuck, and you can't get out, and the water is coming over, and down you go. So there's all types of methods to protect yourself where you come up on your back, put your arms in like this, bring your feet up, and then bring your arms out and begin to paddle. But I got to tell you, these may be methods, but I don't think it's possible because you're gonna hit something, your head's gonna get hit, you might get knocked out. This is, this, is really, this is really why they say, please, please, please fall back to the shelters, get away from where the storm surge is gonna be, unless you have a secure location like we have here. I think you made the point. Thank you so much, Kerry Sanders, for that public service warning, because they ought to get out of the way. Let's go to Garrett Hake, who's in New Bern, New Bern, North Carolina. New Bern, you know, I've never been down there, but it looks like a beautiful part of the country, Garrett. But uh, right now, not a place to visit. Yeah, I would uh, probably stay away for a couple days, Chris, but it, it's interesting. There's a lot of these old historic homes here that have been here for 200 years. A lot of the folks who live down here say, well, my home has lasted this long. Maybe I don't need to leave. But what we're experiencing right now is some of that storm surge that Kerry and others have been talking about. This town is wrapped on two sides by the Noose River, and all day long that noose has been tightening, if you'll forgive the pun. The water has just been coming up out of the banks, pressing further and further into these neighborhoods. Even on the street I'm standing on now, we already had to abandon one live shot location. It was going to turn into an island. But on the street I'm standing on now over the last hour, I've watched, I think our cameraman Brian can show it here, this sort of crud getting pushed up the street here has pushed yeah. up a house and a half length in the last 45 minutes or so. So this water is creeping down the street in a place where, Chris, we have not really seen a ton of rain so far. We have not seen the tropical force winds so far. We are on the lagging edge of this storm, and already we're a block and a half in from the river, and everything is starting to be taken by the river. So this is going to be a long night here, and I think uh, the big question for folks, even folks like who've been here for 20 or 30 years, is how far into this town does the river go? Is this a storm like others that they've seen, or are we just going to have such a amount of pressure, such an amount of water pushing into the town that we're going to see uh, destruction that's beyond what folks who've been through Matthew and some of these other big storms here over the last couple of years uh, recognize. And frankly, Chris, we're in that same uh, guessing yeah. game ourselves here now, trying to figure out if our safe house, if the place where we've chosen to stay here tonight is going to be safe enough. I'm looking at the water behind you. It's surging behind you. How, why are the lights on in those houses? Are those people sticking it out? The ones on the street on both sides. I see um, lights. I Oh, you know, I've got street lights on here. Uh, I, behind our camera position, there are some folks who are still in their homes. I was just talking to them before we came on the air to see what their plans are. But I don't think there's anybody left in any of these houses behind me, Chris. The power right. is still on here. This is a place where they've got underground lines. It's not been blown down yet by the wind. At some point, I am quite certain that will uh, no longer be the case. But the lights have stayed on. The winds have stayed low. And I think that's part of the reason people aren't a little bit more panicked at this point. But this water, I'm watching it come, and it's coming slowly, but it just keeps coming, Chris. And I think that's going to be the story in this part of the North Carolina coast. Well, it's not to be fine in Carolina, but thank you so much, Garrett. Hey, it's a beautiful part of the country, though. What an what a excitement and danger we're facing all at once right now. Let's turn on now to NBC. Meteorologist Jim Bill Carrens, of course, to find out the latest. Bill, you're the expert. What's coming? I, I, I'm telling you, if you look at Garrett, and we all have the lights on him later on about midnight tonight, the high tide of the Noose River there in the Newburn area is going to be about 30 minutes past midnight. The water level there is expected to be about three to four feet higher than where he's standing right now. So picture what that is going to look like and how close that water is going to be to going in some of those homes. So, uh, yeah, that's the picture of the beautiful homes that are up a little bit on the bank there. But that water that's in the road is going to go up about three to four feet additionally. That will be into the first floor level of some of those homes there. That's one of the big concerns there in the Noose River Basin, uh, the Trent River, the River Bend area there. I know it well. I lived in New Bern for a couple of years. I was there yeah. where he was standing when Bertha hit, and it's already at those height levels. So it's going to be a long night tonight, and then tomorrow we're going to do it again, Chris, at the morning high tide 12 hours later. So let me get into the latest with the storm. It's still a Category 2. It's been wobbling around a little bit here. We're stuck in this outer band with tropical storm forest winds. We saw Gaddy blown around there, and the more 
Moorhead City area. He's sure. located right here. New Bern, by the way, is located well inland here. So this is not just a coastal event. It's even far inland that we're going to see this flooding. I am sure that there will be water rescues taking place at the high tide cycle tonight at midnight, far away from the coast and inland areas where those rivers are getting backed up. The winds are starting to pick up. Last check, 78,000 people without power in eastern North Carolina, mostly Carteret County and mostly here in Craven County. Havelock's been gusting the 63. 54 in Hatteras isn't being too bad. We're waiting for it in Wilmington, but it's starting to freshen up at 47. So the storm is currently 90 miles east-southeast of Wilmington, and it looks like it's heading straight for Wilmington. Landfall predicted by the Hurricane Center somewhere during the early morning hours, maybe 8 a.m. to noonish or so, if it stalls out a little later than that. But here's the 2 p.m. position, almost over the top of Wilmington, which, by the way, is about 20 to 30 miles inland from the coast. And then it kind of rains itself out and heads down towards the Myrtle Beach area. So the key times are the high tide cycles. That's when we usually have the most fatalities. That's when the most damage is done with the storm surge. The next high tide is going to be the one I was just talking about that's coming close to midnight from 11, 13 p.m. here near Wrightsville Beach, a little further up the coast, uh, high tides around 11 p.m. That'll be the highest water levels that we've seen so far with the storm. Now, I just saw some new information that they actually are calling for the high tide tomorrow morning at 11 to 11 a.m. to noon to be even higher than the one tonight. So at first, it was looked like tonight would be the worst. That's not the case anymore. So wherever the water level is this, uh, tonight at midnight, it'll probably be an additional foot, maybe half a foot higher tomorrow morning. That's the problem with the <coughs> storm, Chris. It's one high tide cycle after the other. So we get the high tide coming in. We get the dunes taken out. We get damage to the structures. And then we're going to do it again when there's no defenses. And you get the wave action on top of it. And then, Chris, we talked about the rain. And we'll deal with this through the weekend. But, you know, a huge area all the way through South Carolina is going to get two feet of rain out of this so yeah. yeah it's just it's too much water too soon too you know it's a water problem the wind isn't going to cause a ton of damage it's the water that was the biggest threat to lives and property hey there i'm chris hayes from msnbc thanks for watching msnbc on youtube if you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos